name's Rob, and in this episode, we're going to be changing the transfer case on my 99 Chevy Astro. There's a really common upgrade, one of the full-time four-wheel drive cases, where you can have either a shifter or push buttons. Now, this is a superior transfer case for hardcore off-roading. However, there is some misinformation about the 136 and why you might want a 136 over one of these supposed upgrades. And that big reason is snow. And snow and sleet and mud and all that stuff where it's kind of slippery and then not slippery and then kind of slippery and then not slippery. The 136 is the superior transfer case because it does everything automatically on the fly. In my situation, I drive a lot in the snow, I drive a lot in the mud. This is the case I'm doing. Why am I replacing this? This van has 125,000 miles and the whining is getting unbearable. Uh, in one of my previous episodes, I had the rear end rebuilt and we went and installed a G80 locker because I thought it was the rear end and somewhere in the pinion making the whine. It's whenever I'm on the gas, it goes let off the gas, silence. Like I took it in to get the rear end looked at by the shop that did the work and installed the, the locking diff in there. And they said they were pretty sure it was a transfer case. They actually drained the fluid out of my transfer case and it was black and had a bunch of metal flakes in it. So I'm thinking it's a transfer case. What I did is I went to car-part.com and scoped local junkyards found a low mileage transfer case out of a 2004 Chevy Astro. Now there is a split, one of them's Borg Warner, the other one's the NV136, NV136, I think it's 1999, don't quote me, but make sure you get the right one for your application. What we're gonna do first is inspect this one, and then we're gonna tear out the old one, put this one back in, and hopefully get rid of that wine, because when I'm on a 20 hour road trip, that is just exhausting. So hopefully I didn't waste my money, let's do it. So here is my low mileage, 108,000 mile transfer case. This is your input right here from the transmission. This is your front output shaft. This is going to go to your front diff. And then this is obviously the rear output shaft. What I want to do before I even install this is I want to pull this plug right here and see if there's still fluid in there and see what color it is. This should have the auto track 2 fluid, which is blue but I'm gonna be worried if it looks really burnt. I do have a 30 day warranty on this, so I wanna get this installed as soon as possible. Oh, yep, there we go. And we have nice clear blue fluid. Does not look or smell especially stinky. I'm gonna hope this thing has a clean bill of health. We're just going to install it and see what happens. Come, come with me. I will show you the existing turn. All right, there she is. Looks fine. Transmission's right up there. And there's the rear drive shaft. What we're gonna do to start is chalk the wheels, and then we're gonna disconnect the rear drive shaft right here and remove the rear drive shaft. According to the factory instruction manual, you're also supposed to remove the front drive shaft, but I hear you don't need to do that, so we're gonna just leave it in and see how it goes. All right, so I marked the drive shaft because it is balanced as a unit. So that way we can make sure we get it installed the same way that it uh, came off here. Don't know if I can fit a ratchet on all these, but... There we go. Now we're just going to grab the drive shaft and slip it rearward. We don't want to nick the end here. There we go. All right, now we're gonna go toward the front of the van. Right here is the transmission mount, and that needs to be temporarily removed to get to the last fastener on this one. All right, I skipped ahead a bit. We took off the transmission mount by jacking up the transfer case and getting the weight off of it. That allowed me to take off the transfer or the transmission mount, which was right here. Now that that's gone, I can get to the hidden fastener, this one right here, on the very bottom of the transfer case. Once I pull that off, I'm going to put the transmission mount back in here and lower it back down. And then we're going to take off the rest of the fasteners and see if we can get this out of here. All right, so all the fasteners are off the transfer case. The only thing holding it on are these two right here. I did just start smacking it to loosen it, and you can see we've got a little ATF dripping down there, so I moved the pan here. There should be a little bit that comes out. I think that's expected, but we're going to pull this off and drop it and see how it goes. All right. 
right. Out with the old, in with the new. All right, we're skipping ahead a bit. The transfer case swap was successful. Eventually. This video is sponsored by Iceco. They produce 12 volt compressor fridges. We've actually, we've had a knockoff version of this in the past. Um, we had two of them because it broke twice. Let's check this out. So this is the VL35 Pro S. Uh, so it's a 35 liter fridge. They also have a 45 and a 60. One really cool thing about this thing is that you can open it from this side or this side. Actually, I think technically you can just take the whole thing off. Yep, I thought this was the one. Yeah. That's pretty that. slick. This is the single stage. I don't remember what they call it, but some of them are dual capacity. So they have one side that's like the freezer, one side that's the refrigerator. This is just all in one and you can set it to whatever temperature that you want. Inside the fridge, you're going to find the instruction manual for replacement corner caps with the tool required to change it. An extra drain plug an extra handle, which is crazy because this thing is die cast, and the power cords. Let's dig into the features, Sarah. Ooh, features. Here's the control panel. You press and hold three seconds to turn it on. That took me like three tries, just FYI. If you wanna change the battery protection setting, like how low your battery can get before it turns itself off, you press and hold and it'll cycle through these. That's basically so if you're running directly off your starting battery, you can put the battery protection to high and that way you won't wake up in the morning with your car unable to start. The other thing is you can change it from eco to max mode. So say you're trying to, again, conserve battery power or once it's running, we usually turn these to eco. And, you know, when it gets trying to cool everything down, you maybe want to just like blast it and get it going. But yeah, overall, it seems like it's built really well. I just love this. Yeah, love it's, that I can take the whole thing off. That's really cool. Yeah. I've never seen one where you can get to it from either side, mm -hmm. but especially with the double hinge and the double power port, it just seems like this is going to be a pretty versatile fridge. Yeah, especially for a van or any kind of overlanding rig like this. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the transfer case swap. Before I put this back in the van, I wanted to replace this seal. I yanked the other one off just by using a screwdriver and uh, a hammer and prying up on it. This isn't the sealing surface, so feel free to do that. It's actually in here. So I'm just going to put a thin film of non-hardening gasket maker on here just to help lubricate it in there. Then what you want to do is on this, there's going to be a little notch and directly underneath it, there's a drain. And you want to line up the drain with this rib right here. Now to punch it in, I looked for something that was a correct diameter, like a socket or like a piece of PVC, but I couldn't find anything. So we're just going to be using a, a brass punch here. All right, it has been a few days and what I wound up doing was replacing these seals as well. I figured if I'm putting a new one in, we're going to have all three new seals. To get them out, drill a small hole, put a small screw into it, and you can try prying on it. Now to install this one, it is pretty tricky because on the back here, this is your, uh, your output shaft for your front differential. There is a spring here. And what happens is when you slide this on, this lip with this spring will fold over on the shoulder of that little shaft there. And your spring will not be on here and it could potentially get into your bearing. You could have a bad time. So to, to, to install this thing, I cut up a piece of Propel water bottle or something. Basically, take your seal, put this in here like that, and use any type of lubricant. Um, you can use white lithium grease or WD-40, whatever you want. But put it on the inside and the outside of this plastic. And so then you're going to tap this in. And when it's done, you're just going to use two needle nose, grab it on both ends, and pull this straight out. So that's my trick for installing the front output shaft on a NV136. So anyway, we got all three new seals and I have a new gasket here to go to the transmission. I think it's time to put it in. Right, Sarah? We jacked the van up to roll the transfer case under there.
All right, I'm stopping recording because you can't see shit anyway, and I'm gonna need to be there the only place the camera could be is. So just imagine us putting this in here effortlessly. All right, after swearing and banging it around, I got this thing mounted all the way in. I have four of the five bolts on, and what I'm doing now is I'm just jacking it up to remove the piece of wood that I had here uh, supporting the transmission and everything so I can get to this last stud right here. With the transmission still jacked up, we're gonna throw the mount in here. We can fit it in here. Now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna make sure our marks line up, because again, this is balanced as an assembly. All right, everything's buttoned up under the van. Now we just need to add the fluid. You have to use Auto Track 2 fluid. It is blue. Do not use ATF, do not use anything else. Use this stuff. This is the only fluid you want to use in these uh, transfer cases. It's like 10 or 12 bucks a bottle, not bad. Probably gonna need a fluid transfer pump and then also some Teflon tape and a razor blade to add a little bit of a coating to the plugs because of the magnesium case. Don't wanna have it corrode in there. So we're gonna go under there and throw some fluid in it and go for a test drive and see if I just wasted a bunch of money and time, dudes. All right, dudes, there you go. That's how you pull a transfer case, replace the seals, and put a new one in on an Astro van. So hopefully this solves my problems. Um, if you wanna see how that turns out, keep watching. It's whenever I'm on the throttle at all, it's just this whine that gets louder and louder and higher pitched and higher pitched. What I think is weird is that the, the faster we go, the louder it gets, and we don't really hear it at all until like 55 above 60. I feel like it went away at 80. Yeah, it goes away at 80. I'm on the gas, okay. So it was a transfer case because it didn't... We just need to go 80 miles an hour, Sarah. Oh, okay. It's gone. Oh, Dude, man. it's gone at 80. That's interesting. All right, so we have some longer term updates. It was still making noise, but it went away at 80 miles an hour. I was bummed, but I knew it was the transfer case. Here's what's interesting. I let the van sit for three days and I took it on another trip and it was completely silent, completely. So my guess is that that transfer case that I bought had been sitting on a shelf, drained, dried out for I don't know how many years. It's been probably sitting there. And so when I first put it in and added fluid and took it for a test drive, Nothing was like totally lubricated yet and after taking it for a short drive and then parking the van It's been flawless The van is so quiet to drive on the highway now And I think I gained like one to two miles per gallon on the freeway So hopefully this video helps some of you guys out I'd never done this before but it's the same procedure if you want to do the four-wheel drive or the all-wheel drive like I did This has been such a huge improvement to the quality of life of this van because it's so much less exhausting to drive long distances It's not the whole time. Anyway, if you learn anything, please leave a like and a comment. Till next time, dudes. Got a bunch of videos coming out really soon, so stay tuned.